Hey guys, it's Jeff and I'm back again with another awesome Roots screencast. This one we're going to be diving into some more advanced content and we're going to be talking about different ways that you can split out your content between static and dynamic using some of the nice little pieces in Roots' toolkit. So, before we get started, I want to explain a concept that I had for a way to build a site uh, and then I'm going to show some example code that I wrote with Roots in order to uh, demonstrate that concept and that will be that. So let's think about uh, building a site potentially with an API and I'll give this a little bit of context by um, explaining uh, some very simple application that we have here at Care Creative for an API. We have a lot of staff at this company, we're a quickly growing company and we have this uh, full featured staff page with all these avatars and a whole bunch of information about each of our staff members like social networks and a little custom stat about yourself and your department. We also have like where you're from and what your commute is like, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, so that we can do fun things with this information for all of our staff. And so rather than hard coding all of this, which would be too much to manage, uh, we store all of this in an API and this is where you can find the API. And you can see here a absolutely massive block of JSON containing uh, information about each of our staff members. So this is the kind of thing that I might want to be able to use to build a static or dynamic site as a data source rather than hard coding all of the data. And the more larger sites that we build here, the more we find that a lot of the time we have to rely on having an API serve up the data because that just makes it more flexible overall. Now if you take that a step further, I'm going to switch context a little bit and talk about blogs. Blogs are something that are often generated dynamically, but they don't really need to be. They could be served statically because their content doesn't change that often. It's not like every time you go to the page, you'll see different content. Like every time people go to facebook.com, they'll see different content because it's constantly changing, they're logged in as different users, etc. But with something like a blog, this is one of those use cases where it's dynamic just because nobody has really figured out how to make it static in the right way yet. And so let me talk about what my vision is for how you could build out something like a blog. So let's say that you have a thousand posts. You know that when your user gets to your homepage, they're always going to see the first 10 posts, let's say, because those are the ones listed on the homepage. But usually, you have to paginate your content after you get to a certain point. So while you're most, well, all users, frankly, would see the first 10 posts, it's unlikely that that many users would see your 500th post unless they click through all the, those pages or arrive at it directly. So ideally, the situation would be that you can hook up with your API into Roots and render a certain number of these pieces of content as static. So you have those already built into the HTML, a certain number of them. And after that, you can have the content pulled in through a user action if it's needed. So for example, on the first page, you would have your first 10 posts rendered as static so that they immediately load it. And then if the user clicks next, it would load in the next 10 posts from the API and render them out onto that list using JavaScript. This is what we've sort of coined as static hybrid because it's not entirely a dynamic site that relies on JavaScript in order to run it all. In fact, in the initial load, you don't even need any JavaScript because it's all static. But at a certain point, which you can arbitrarily define as your needs require, you can switch it over to using more dynamic content and rendering it using JavaScript. So that's enough of my theory crafting. Let's jump into a more precise example that's uh, something that I've been working on as a little example app to show you guys. 
Again, this is more advanced Roots content. So if you haven't had some time to experiment with Roots, mess around with a few of the extensions and watch the previous tutorial videos, this will probably be a little bit confusing for you and it might be a waste of time. So make sure that you're familiar with Roots uh, and you're ready to dive in pretty deep uh, at this point before continuing on. So I'm going to show you the result site first and then I'm going to explain how I built it here. So I'm just going to run Roots Watch and uh, in just a moment this should pop up. Yep, so here it is and I have 10 staff members here rendered from our API along with their photos statically so when I refresh there's no uh, load time other than the time required to display the images by the browser, of course. Uh, this is just part of the HTML. If I view the source, I can confirm that. This is all of the pictures, this is all the names. Looks wonderful. Uh, however, when I click See More, it continues loading in staff members dynamically onto the page, which is just great. Um, this is a totally silly example, and it is meant to be a silly example because uh, simple things are usually the best kind of examples to get started with, but as you can imagine this could be applied to a variety of situations and you guys will see if you continue watching through these videos how this same concept can be applied to a uh, large production site in order to speed up load times and make it more efficient. So let's look through the code here. First of all, all of the data for this whole site is coming from that API URL that I showed you before. Um, we're using a extension called Roots Records, and what Roots Record does is it can load in data from a file or an external API, as long as it's JSON data, and it will parse that and it will add it into your uh, locals so that they are available to use in your HTML. If you just use the locals hash in your app.coffee, you just have to put the data in directly there. However, Roots Records offers you a little bit more advanced functionality in that you can pull data from remote sources asynchronously, and you can also use things like this path to navigate through and dice up your data and choose exactly which sections of the data you want to pull out. For example, if you look here, I know this is hard to read, but at the start we just have some basic, uh, you know, assertions about the data, like that the result came through, we have the success code, and our actual information is contained in this array called data. So rather than having to sort through and go to dot data every time I use it, I just define this path as data here as an option to Roots Records so that I could just get the data I want. If you look up Roots Records on GitHub and check out the documentation, you can find more options like this and ways that you can customize your data loads in a very specific manner which is cool. So we'll have all of this uh, staff data available in our locals and our views under records. So let's look at our main view here. This is pretty straightforward, very small, uh, slim, limited page. And all we're doing here is iterating through records.staff, which again is the way I defined it here. Anything pulled in using roots records is stacked on a records base object to avoid conflicts. Past that, it just uses the key that you passed in along with your configuration data. So records.staff will contain an array of our information. We're using Jade to iterate through this with the actual staff data here and the number here of our iteration. And in this next line, we're just cutting it off after a certain number of staff members. So this is the part where we choose how many, how many items do we want to render static versus dynamic and this config value is down here. We'll go through this piece in just a moment, uh, but we've arbitrarily set this at 10, so it'll only render the first 10 staff, uh, otherwise it will not render them. After this, we just use a basic jade include to pull in this template here and uh, render its information, and the contents of this template is unsurprising. It's just an image with a SVG of the staff's avatar and a printout of their name. So nothing crazy going on here. All of this is very basic and straightforward. It's just a loop through some content, cuts it off at a certain number, and uh, renders a template in here. And at the bottom, we have this more button that you saw previously. Now where things start getting interesting are in the JavaScript. 
I'm going to open up this file, but before we break this down too far, I want to go through a couple of the other extensions that we're using here in app.coffee. First of all, we're using a extension called Roots Client Templates, which you can pass a folder or path, and it will take any view files there and compile them as JavaScript functions, making them available to your JavaScript. So you can see here we have views slash templates. And then here is the template that we use to render our static staff member already. So we're taking this same template and we're compiling this as a JavaScript function so that it is available in our JavaScript. So that when we load in the dynamic staff members, we can use the same template without having to repeat ourselves or duplicate templates for that purpose, which is pretty convenient. Second, we're using this config extension. And so this extension will pipe any um, configuration information we pass to it, or really any information in general. It will both put it in our locals so that it's available to our HTML, as well as exposing a function, config.js, which will output a script tag that um, makes it such that these config values are also available to our JavaScript. So what we're doing here is just making sure that JavaScript is aware of our API URL and also that our JavaScript is aware of how many items we've chosen to render as static so that we can start from that point when we're rendering dynamic items. Let's look back at this JavaScript template now. Again, this is very, very slim and bare bones. It doesn't require a lot to get this going, which is great. Um, all we're doing here is up top we have this empty staff array. As soon as the page loads, we use jQuery to go load up the API URL and get those results back. Um, the bet here is that before you can get your mouse to the more staff button, this data will have already loaded. This may be a bad idea depending on the speed of your API and whether it's just a silly testing site or a production site. So be careful of this kind of uh, method. And if you are employing this, make sure you at least have a backup. But this works very nicely for this example. Um, so once we've got the data back, when the page loads, all we do is we assign res.data to the staff array so that we fill in this array with all of our uh, Carrot staff members. And additionally, we use a construct here called ranges in CoffeeScript to ensure that this only takes from the 10th staff item on. So if you recall, uh, our config static items is 10. This is how this construct looks. And all this does is just starts at the 10th item and pulls all the other items until the end of the data. Um, you can do this with uh, vanilla JavaScript as well. It just is more of a pain, and so it's convenient for me to have this nice CoffeeScript construct here and also makes it a little bit easier to read. So assuming that the page is loaded and we have our staff array starting at the 10th staff member, all we need to do now is when the More button is clicked, we can render our first staff member that's in our staff array into our templates, which are here, templates.staff. Um, and then we can just take that HTML and append it to our list. After that, I'll just splice out the first staff member so that we don't end up repeating that staff member over and over. And the next time that more is clicked, it will go on to the second, third, etc. So again, this does work very nicely. Um, I'll reload to show you again how it looks. We render the first 10. We can add more staff and they get popped in. If you want to see how we can change our allocation of static versus dynamic, I'll make that change quickly. Let's boost this to 15. Since we changed our config, we restart the watcher and we let it do its thing. It should load up in just a moment. There it is. And now we have 15 staff members. You can see this is notably longer than before. And it still starts at the next one from the JavaScript automatically. So very cool concept. Of course, this is a silly example. But this kind of code and this kind of static hybrid concept can really be used for some very interesting production applications. In the next video, you'll see one good example of this. And I hope that if you're interested, 
uh, the wonderful users of Roots will be able to produce many more interesting examples of how a technique like this could be used. For your convenience, this is open source and it is available publicly at caret slash static hybrid example. So you can pull down this code, check it out, and run it for yourself if you want. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you next time.